So I'm about as psychic as a wet towel, meaning I'm useless. You don't come to me if you need anything about psychic abilities. But I've worked with psychics for over 10 years and I've learned what I like about them, I've learned what I don't like about them, and I've also learned a little bit of how they work. Even though I am not psychic, I do have these eight tips to help you with your own psychic abilities. And if you want to use a psychic, what you should keep a lookout for and what you can do to improve your experience with your psychic. So buckle up, hang on tight, because we're going to go through these eight tips pretty quickly, because otherwise this video is going to be over an hour, and we don't want that. We're not here for that. So before we get started, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Find me on Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter. I'm pretty much everywhere. I'm not hard to find. And feel free to drop me a line and say hi. I love it when people say hi. Also, you can leave a comment, and I'll be sure to reply to that comment as well. So how I'm going to do this is I'm going to share the pet peeve, and then I'm going to talk about the solution to the pet peeve and a tip for the psychic and a tip for the client. If you're psychic, listen to the tip for the psychic. If you're the client, that means you're not psychic or you're looking for the aid of a psychic. Meh. Oh, I got an itch. Ugh. Finally got my undercut touched up, by the way. Hey. Literally, the hair was growing sideways. I had to do something. Okay, I'm getting off track. Let's get started now. Pet peeve number one, being too general. So, if you're not familiar with the concept of a cold reading, then I definitely suggest that you pause this video, go to Google, look up cold reading psychic. Basically what that means is you make such a general statement, it will apply to almost anybody. Like if a psychic looked at me and said, I sense the presence of a very old woman in your life. Okay, anybody can probably fit in that. Even if I was 10 years old or 44 or 34, you know, there's gonna be some sort of older woman in my life, whether it be my mother, my grandmother, great-grandmother, mother-in-law, the list goes on. I mean, we all know an older woman in our life. For someone who doesn't know any better, if they hear that from a psychic, they may think, oh, that's my grandma, and they say that, and you tell the psychic it's your grandma, well, okay, there we go. They have something to work off of, and yeah. So making a really broad statement and then making it apply to somebody in the audience, in the group, or just in your normal life. Also, I've heard a lot of psychics say to me, this is very old land. I mean, unless you're living in Hawaii next to a volcano where there's new land being like developed, I mean, I feel like the whole world is old land, so to speak. I mean, where can I find young land? Anyway, general statements, not a fan. So the tip for the psychic, be specific. I appreciate a psychic that can be specific over being general, specific, Pacific, specific. I'd rather you give it a shot, say the name, say the person you think you're seeing. I value that and have you be wrong over just a super general statement and then you're looking for me uh, to give you the answers and fill in the blanks with the details. That's not how this works. And if all you can do is hit a general point, then maybe you're not getting the information that you need and maybe I would say just take a step back. And here's a tip for the client. If you're dealing with a psychic that is being really broad in general, you can ask for specific questions. Um, obviously don't give off clues to the psychic like, you know, with your body language or say, oh yeah, that older woman is my grandmother because you give it away. So. It's super tempting to verify that, but try to stay as neutral as possible. And if they don't get it, they don't get it, and that's okay. I, you know, even the best psychics that I know don't get it right all the time. Okay, pet peeve number two is reading the room. I dealt with a psychic one time. We were going into this room, and the room was very masculine looking. I mean, it was it was the father's study. So we're talking like a leather couch and antlers on the wall, and I mean, <laughs> it, 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 it like screamed masculinity and the psychic that I took into the room said I'm sensing a lot of male energy in here okay yeah I mean the antlers on the wall probably give it away I mean the study like the whole bit is just man so for me that's not a psychic epiphany that's just being able to read the room so in this case, my tip for the psychic is, if this is a big concern for you that the room may give off like evidence of like a male presence, children, or you're looking to avoid anything that could give stuff away and taint you, I would say go in blindfolded. 
go in blindfold and see what you pick up and then take off the blindfold and see if you were right. And my tip for the client in this situation is call it out. If you were me in that situation with the psychic that said, I'm sensing a male energy in this room or this is a man's room, I would just say, because this is what I did, I said, oh yeah, were the antlers the dead giveaway here? You know, just something light, funny, you know, just to make it known that, hey, yeah, even I can pick up that there's male energy in this room because of the decor. Pet peeve number three, not asking for consent. If you are a psychic medium and you are invited to read somebody, you are exploring some of their deepest, darkest vulnerabilities, secrets. You're basically being intimate with your clients in a way, in a total non-creepy way. <laughs> but, you know, reading someone is a very personal experience. But what drives me nuts, and I see this on social media all the time, is when somebody approaches a commenter and says, you know, I'm picking up blah, 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 or even at a ghost hunt, I'll have at least one psychic that goes up to somebody and starts reading them without asking for permission and without asking if it's okay. And if you do this and you don't ask for consent, I'm sorry, you're a jerk. Because you are trying to essentially make a show of yourself at this person's expense. I'm all for if you are picking something up about someone and you just have to tell them something, Pull them aside, say, hey, can I talk to you in private? Or, hey, can I send you a message really quick? Because you don't want to do this in front of people, especially if you start to expose things about somebody that they may not want the world to know about. So definitely, definitely ask for consent and really value the client's privacy. Tip for the psychic, just ask for permission. That's all. And if you are the client in this situation and someone starts reading you right away, um, yeah, you could stop it. You could say, whoa, 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 can we talk about this in private? Something like that. But also, if a psychic is approaching you, it's okay to say no. Also, be on the lookout for the psychic trying to charge money, or they basically uh, impose a free reading on you so that you can pay for the rest of the reading. Um, I tend to call these cliffhanger readings because it's like, oh, I'm sensing, you know, your mother-in-law really needs to tell you something, something about the jewelry. And then you're like, oh yeah, what? And then they say, well, you should really book a session with me for this because it's gonna take a long time and that'll be 50 bucks. Be careful about those things. Also, this tends to happen in a lot of the different stores that do like tarot readings and other things, but they'll say something to the effect of, oh, there's a curse on your family. If you pay me $5,000, I can lift this curse. It's a scam, walk away. If you want to pay a psychic for their time and the reading, then go find a psychic who does that. Just be very careful about the ones that approach you about it. And also, yeah, you are in control of the situation, by the way. All right, pet peeve number four is giving medical advice. So this actually runs on the line of legal issues because if you're telling if you're the psychic and you're telling the client like oh you know you actually don't need to take that medication or you're not dealing with schizophrenia you're dealing with demons that person may think oh i'm just dealing with demons i need a priest i don't need to take my meds anymore yeah that's a whole liability issue right there speaking of liability issues cali cat so cali's butt is going to talk further you know if you take the microphone will pick it up right Hey, we're trying to talk about psychic. If you're a, if you're psychic and you're giving readings and whatnot, never give medical advice. Now, here's your tip. Now, if you are getting something about the client like, hey, you should get your throat checked out or, you know, I'm sensing something over here in your hip. I'm not sure what it is. That's okay, but just don't tell the, the client how to treat it. Don't treat the condition. Encourage your client to follow up with their doctor. Like for real, because even if you have an MD and you're giving a psychic reading, I would still say don't do it. <laughs> I would say tell your client to follow up with their doctor. Because I have seen people get readings and the and the psychic said, hey, you know, check your uh, check your stomach. I'm getting your spirit guides are telling me something about your stomach. The client goes and gets their stomach checked out, and bada bing, bada boom, there's a tumor. Great, not great, but you get you get what I'm saying. So I feel like. 
those hints and, and stuff, I think they're okay. But even so, I mean, the whole medical advice thing, that's a gray area. That's a potentially dangerous area, liability-wise. Just try to stay away from it. Now, if you are the client and the psychic is trying to tell you, like, you can change your medication after this and X, Y, and Z, go the other way. They don't have your best interest at heart. But if the psychic is telling you, hey, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm feeling like a headache, you maybe go see your doctor, go see your doctor. Anytime a psychic tells you anything about your body, health-wise, go see a doctor afterwards. Because, you know, just in case, you never know. Hey, pet peeve number five. Refusing to be wrong. I can't tell you how many times I've worked with psychics who, of course, not all of them. I mean, I know some amazing psychics, but there's a, a select few who refuse to be wrong. Like, to the point where it's almost comical. I worked with a psychic one time who kept looking at me and said, I see a kid with you. Now, okay, so this kind of goes into the whole, you know, respect the client's privacy and whatnot, because at the time the psychic didn't know, like, seeing a kid around me was an upsetting point. And I said, okay. And she said, oh, you're a mother. No, I'm not. But again, this goes into that whole thing of, hey, this, um, you know, this is a sensitive subject for me. But the psychic said, oh, you have a kid in school right now. No, I don't. <laughs> I do not have a kid in school. I don't have any kids right now at the point that this video was made. But the psychic was like, no, 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 you have a kid in school right now. They're in like second or third grade. Oh, no, they're not. No, 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 no. And I kept telling her, I said, I don't have any children. And she's like, yes, you do. I'm like, no, I don't. Why would I lie about that? And there's been other examples of this too. But I think one of the most admirable things about the best psychics I've ever worked with is they're willing and open to being wrong and they use that as a learning opportunity to improve their own abilities and if you're the client on this end of it where the psychic is just totally wrong and totally off to left field try to be gentle about it um, unless you know they're being pushy then obviously handle it how you need to handle it but you know I always remind the psychic that it's okay to be wrong and we can always use this to redirect and do all these different things, but yeah, just, just be gentle because being wrong is, it's, it's hard. It's really hard. I mean, to be psychic and have abilities and be confident enough to put yourself out there, that's a big deal. So, you know, at the same time, if they refuse to be wrong, approach it with some gentleness and see what happens and if they still think they're correct in the situation then you know to move on pet peeve number six reading a famous location like it's a new place now i can't keep track of what psychics do before an investigation especially if they're going to someplace famous like gettysburg this is tricky because there's so much information about Gettysburg out there. I mean, I can just type in Gettysburg on Google and I have millions of search results of research of all these different areas and facets of Gettysburg. When I went to Gettysburg, I did have one psychic with me who, I'm not kidding you, went to the battlefield with me and said, I feel a massive battle happened here. What? <laughs> like, no. <laughs> so, my reply wasn't no shit Sherlock, but it almost was. And I feel if you are psychic, here's your tip. If you're gonna read a famous location, just be super transparent about what you already know. And maybe you can explore from there. What I like to do as the client or as the non-psychic, I'll try to direct the psychic to different things. Like if we're in Gettysburg and we're in downtown, I'll say, hey, what do you pick up from that building? Um, or what are what is your feeling from from this artifact at a museum you know just things like that and that goes back to you know being in too general you don't want to be too general and you want to be specific so I think if it's something that can be easily searchable take it with a grain of salt and don't be afraid to call that out pet peeve number seven taking over and tainting a ghost hunt I'm gonna be completely transparent here this one is incredibly hard to manage if you are dealing with more than one psychic. As a director of a team where at one point uh, the number of psychics actually outnumbered 
The non-psychic people, or muggles as I call them, it's like herding cats. It's incredibly difficult to have more than one psychic on investigation because eventually one person, as I call the alpha psychic, they start to speak up and then the other psychics that aren't so alpha will start to agree with them and then they start making suggestions to each other to the point where I'm like, are you all even accurate anymore? Are you just kind of spouting off different things? And then you'll have someone who's psychic who's off on the corner going like, I'm not picking any of this stuff up. I don't know what the frick I'm doing. So it just turns into one big mess. And it's also really hard to verify, like, is this actually coming from them? Or is, is it just because the alpha psychic said something and X, Y, and Z. So if you are the psychic, or a psychic in an investigation, there's more than one, take really precise notes. I'm talking like time stamping, dating everything, creating a paper trail. I'm also very much on the side of, hey, I do want to help out in the study of verifying that psychic abilities may or may not exist. And time stamping everything helps. Like if you're picking something up ahead of the investigation or about the client, email those thoughts to yourself so it's time stamped and there's a date on it or talk to another team member that has signed a non-disclosure agreement just saying hey this is what I'm picking up you know there's there's many different ways you can do this and if you're the client or if you run a ghost hunting team or you're part of a team that has a lot of psychics suggest taking some time aside to have each psychic walk through the house and have somebody who's not psychic take a video and then that way everything is recorded i can't take credit for that idea though my lead medium on my team association of paranormal study my lead medium caitlin actually came up with this and i think it's actually pretty brilliant so it worked for us because we have videos of all the walkthroughs and we can see if there are any areas that were consistently getting hits from the psychics and if Caitlin says something to me saying, oh, I picked this up earlier. I can go back to the video and check and it's awesome because it's right there. So I love the video idea and, you, and it's just as easy as doing it on your phone. I mean, you don't have to get any fancy camcorder equipment or anything. Pet peeve number eight. We made it. Yeah. Last pet peeve. <laughs> Caving in too easily with other psychics. So this issue is actually almost the opposite of tainting because basically you're not the alpha and you're just caving in to what the alpha psychic is saying. I This drives me crazy. And what drives me even more crazy is I've had a psychic tell me their impressions and readings of a location and then the alpha psychic came along and gave their readings and then the other psychic that basically changed their story, they said, oh, actually, what I picked up was what they picked up. And I'm sitting here like, what? So <laughs> this is where the whole recording thing comes in handy, but stay strong in your reading because I, if all the psychics I've ever worked with had the exact same reading, I'd be like, what the frick? Because psychic mediums, you know, those who are clairvoyant, intuitive, uh, there's so many different um, terms when it comes to the psychic umbrella. N I've yet to meet two people that had the exact same gift. So with that in mind, psychic tip, this means that you are all going to pick up on different things. Just because the alpha psychic or another psychic picks up one thing and you don't, that doesn't mean that you're not psychic. It means that maybe you're picking up on something else. It's just like when you go to a party you gravitate to certain people. Certain people gravitate to you. I think that's the same thing in the afterlife too. Like just because one ghost isn't talking to you and they're talking to this other person, they just may connect to that other person more. It doesn't mean that you're not psychic. It just means that your gifts are probably, probably going to be utilized in a different way. So definitely stay strong with that. And if you are the client or the non-psychic in this situation, try to be that psychic's advocate, meaning you know, do things to kind of give them some kudos like, hey, Sarah, you picked up on this, I noticed, and we're getting this result in our ghost hunt. That's really interesting. You know, give them some kudos and some credit. Um, encourage them to share their own experiences because that will really help in building their confidence. 
Because like I said earlier, I mean, it's a very vulnerable thing to have abilities and then come forward forward with those abilities. I mean, today's world is hard enough and it's stressful enough. I mean, we can lift each other up a little bit. And I've been trying to do that more with psychics who are just starting out and they're trying to build their confidence. So I just make sure that they don't get railroaded by a more dominant personality that may have some more confidence in their abilities. But yeah, you don't have to align all the time. And sometimes I found that the Alpha Psychic was wrong, but because everyone else went with what the Alpha Psychic was saying, I feel like we waste a tremendous amount of time, which is frustrating as a team director. So I've talked a lot about pet peeves when it comes to working with psychics, and I've shared tons of tips with this. But the big question is, what do the good psychics do? So here are my thoughts. Final thoughts before this video is over. They are open to being wrong. Some of the best psychics I have ever worked with are open to being wrong. And they don't open just their minds, but they open their hearts as well. They will be confident, but they will also be flexible. Confidence does not mean unadaptable. Confidence means that you're willing to go with the flow, respect the process of whoever you're with, go with their pacing, um, not being pushy or imposing their own thoughts and beliefs on a client or a ghost hunting team. And they acknowledge that they are tools in the process and they are a bridge between the physical world and the spiritual world. And they're also curious. They're always curious and they're always studying their craft. They are always trying to improve and, and they're always trying to get feedback on what they're doing. And I, I have to respect that so much because the psychics that I've worked with who are overconfident and not willing to be flexible and don't want feedback, those are the ones who are off probably the most. But the ones who are flexible, open, adaptable, confident, respectful, always seeking to learn more, those are always the best psychics that I have ever worked with. And that can be you too. And you know, if you ever need any psychic advice, tips and tricks, I know people who do have abilities that can offer this to you. But I hope that as somebody who doesn't have abilities but has worked with people who have abilities, I hope there was something you could take away from this because I do think it's important to know what the people over here experience with psychics, you know? What do us muggles go through with it? If you have any tips and tricks for psychics, feel free to share them in the comments. I would love to hear what you have to say. And also, before you say goodbye, don't forget to subscribe, give this video a like, and find me on social media. Like I said before, I'm everywhere. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next round.